Hey kids, it's Jurassic James, and on this Jurassic James Explains, we're looking at Megaceros. So what you're seeing here is not a dinosaur, it is a mammal, it looks very familiar. Essentially, it's the world's largest deer. Now, same rules apply, oldest and youngest. And I want to point out, first of all, the name, if you see in the title or subject line, Megaceros. Uh, people often think it's Megaceros, and that's because it was initially named Megaceros, but it turns out that name is actually used already for a beetle. So it'll have to be changed to Megaceros. So it still means like big horn, big, big deer. But the funny thing is, on my Mononychus video about two weeks ago, I mentioned how Mononychus was thought to be, was initially spelled with like Y C K U S, and that's a Y K U S, because again, Mononychus was actually already used for a beetle. You're probably wondering why it's not a big deal. There are a lot of beetles in the world. Anyway, on, the, on point, the first one I have here, of course, is Bully Land. It's a company I don't really talk about much. They don't make as many figures as like Popo or Safari. Um, but the main thing to point out, makes it stand out, is this large set of antlers. And what makes it so special, the animal in general, is that these or six, each antler was six feet, which is taller than me, long. So both were 12 feet long and it weighed about 100 pounds. So if you don't know, and I'll go over it in more detail in a minute, but horns are usually grown and they're year round. They're forever. They're like a cow or, you know, they have, or a bison. They have big horns that are there. Antlers are grown by the males only in the species with a couple of, one exception. They grow them. They shed them and they grow them again, basically. So you have to imagine every year this animal is taking, the males are taking time to eat enough nutrients and remember what your bones are made of, calcium phosphate, to they need that from the environment and they're herbivores, they're eating these from, from plants. They're growing these huge antlers and they're using them to fight and, you know, get mates and they lose them. And my analogy to you is this. Imagine, I would say, you know, imagine guys that you spend, let's say half, a third or a half of your income to buy a sports car and then you use it to get girls, and then you, at the end of the year, you just drive it into a wall and blow it up, and then next year, take the money and do the exact same thing again and again. That's what's happening here. Anyway, the bullet ant figure gets the point across. Um, the one thing to point out is that we actually see cave art drawings of this animal. So when you see this um, this pattern, well, first of the fossil horns, of course, antlers, of course, antlers have horns, but also we see the, the cave art. So what's really special is that there is a hump right there you see right there, there's a hump. The idea is that in the fossils, we don't see that. By comparison, bison have very tall neural spines. Again, if you reach, touch the back of your back, you see these little bumps in your vertebra, those little bumps are your neural spines, but for a spinosaurus or a bison, they're really tall. So Megasaurus is actually missing those, which means this is probably like a fatty hump right there. And you're like, how, wait, how do you know that again? Because again, we have actual cave art where people have drawn these things. The skeleton doesn't show it, we see it in the actual cave art. So Again, they, those people back then did not know they were attributing to future paleontologists because they were just trying to survive. But that's kind of a cool thing to point out because most of the animals on this channel did not live with people. So you have no idea how it looked based solely on suggestive evidence, trace evidence, and of course the bones themselves. That being said, overall, and other parts there, um, I will mention real quickly before I, you're like looking at this, what's going on there. I'll tell you in a minute. So in the world of deer, the, uh, the nickname of this animal is the Irish elk. And the important thing about that is it's not found only in Ireland. It's found all across Eurasia, uh, from, 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 you know, France across to like Siberia. But anyway, and actually in the world of, uh, and again, there are lots of deer in the world, lots of different kinds of deer, but only a few get like toys. So here they are, you know, your American moose, dun, 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 you know, uh, the red deer from Europe. We have a caribou, AKA reindeer, Santa's best friends. Uh, we have here elk, actual elk, and then the megatherus. So despite being named the Irish elk, it's actually not close related to elk. And there is a whole world of deer, family tree and paleo deer people. That's the funny thing is that people, you know, you think of paleontology, you're like dinosaurs or trilobites, but there are paleontologists who specialize in Pleistocene Ice Age animals. And the, th the thought of studying animals that saw other humans is kind of cool, but within the world of deer, and I'll put a link in the description of my, my deer, actually the mammals that deer fall under the order are arterodactyls, the odd toed undulates. So the idea is that animals with hooves are called undulates. And if they have, sorry, even toed undulates, if they, our pterodactyls have two or four hooves. So think of your deer, cows, goats, those guys. Uh, Perceridactyls are the ones with odd toes. So I think horse with one, tapers and rhinos, they put their weight on two, one to three finger basically. So let me break it down in, 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 in paleontology and in biology, zoology. So in the world of, of these guys, uh, the elk is not as close as relative. Actually, we it's being debated, but, uh, but as far as toy wise, the red deer, is actually considered one of the closest relatives of these groups. 
and the reindeer and the moose mainly outside of those that family. So these are all based on morphology. So the idea of, of the actual way it's shaped, uh, often with modern species, you, do, you can use DNA, but again, this animal went extinct at la the latest, it was 7,600 years ago. They were already, they were gone. So again, we're, but we're looking at morphology changes and there's other relatives uh, of deer in, in Europe that we're looking at too. But as far as a model goes, it hits all the main points that, the, you know, this very thin antler, these spreads up like, like a palm almost. That's something we see in many examples. There's multiple species actually of this animal too. And the toys do not specify which species it is. So I'm moving on now to the, and it's called the Dr. Steve's Hunters. Uh, it's a, it's a, he, it's like a geo world, like companies where this guy makes these, or at least advises on making these models. So this one here basically has, is, um, I, I personally don't like the bases. I get the idea for a, uh, like a, a, a two legged animal, like a theropod, they can't balance the figure. They have a base, but for a four legged animal, it kind of annoys me. But anyway, uh, so you got, you got, now looking at this one, um, it looks like a giant elk, which, yeah. But the idea is that based on the cave art, we know the humps there, and we see that there is like a black line running along here. So there's actually a black line of tough hair. And we look at many, not the ones I showed you earlier, but the many deer species today, they'll have different patterns here or there. So I think they just kind of looked at the, like a modern deer and said, eh, it's like that, or, you know, like an elk. Well, actually not even deer, particularly elk, which is not like the best thing to point out. But um, they also give you this little, um, well, actually these cards. And the cards have, and they're in, I think, like French and English and Spanish. So you can kind of make your own little, make your own little book there, pull a punch. So that's kind of a cool thing to point out. But overall, like, I think they just took a modern elk like you would see in England and just blew it up basically. But uh, the next thing to point out, and this is something that's special, is that um, I've, I've always told you about my friends in Dinosaur Park, mention my address isn't showing, um, my friends in Dinosaur Park, how they you can sell models there. And again, I want to point out this video is not a um, sponsored video. They didn't pay me to do this. I just really like them and I spend a lot of money at their park buying figures. So I'm gonna put a link below in the description showing you where you can get these figures as well. But I also wanna point out that uh, uh, I ordered some, I ordered three different creatures. Uh, Megaceros is in that group. So I'm gonna open that one now and show it to you. But the next two videos are gonna be on the other two animals. One is Augustinia, a sauropod from South America. The other is Pontosuchus, the star of late Triassic. Uh, and I am going to first open the box with the official scissors of Jurassic James. Yeah, the, the, the sword and seeping noise. So, uh, like I said, I often will do field trips at Dinosaur Park. I will take people out there and give them, show them around. or just tell you to go. Um, but because of COVID, I've not been going, you know, the last like, year or two. So, uh, and then I realized at some point I can just order them online. <laughs> and that's and where we are. So, let's see. Lots of nice padding, which is awesome because you don't want your figures being tossed around. I'm going to just put this on the floor. Um, whoa, okay. So, uh, this will be the Augustinia, which I'll do the video next week. And this, ah, there we go. This is the Pontosuchus, which you'll see next week. And, well, after that. And here's our Megaceros. Now, I'll put the official scissors away. For safety reasons, you must receive them in their jewel encrusted case and put them back. Now, this is my first time seeing this. It was obviously a filled box. Now, one thing I, could, I want to point out here is I, li I love this. I like it when the figures have the, uh, the plastic right there to protect them because uh, one of the biggest issues I've ever seen or had is when you see a figure and they get warped and heated up and you know the legs don't work as well. And when I am in stores and I'm sitting there looking for one I want to buy, I'll put them and see how they stand, basically. Um, this also had a, I assume, yeah, it had like a, like a, I'm not sure how it goes on there, but it had to protect the uh, antlers themselves. So, let me go ahead. This looks really cool. Just go. Um, I'm sorry. This is my first time seeing this figure, and I'm super excited because it looks really cool. Like, and what's really funny is that with the dinosaurs, it's like, I know that guy. I, I mean, I, you know, we know them. We don't know them. We, we know deer. So, it's like really to see this interpretation of the animal. Um, and again, they have that nice hump right there. And the way the, uh, and again, the antlers, that's really cool because, yeah, there's a certain design they have, but there would be uh, individual changes. Like individual specimens, it's like a human, we're all the same species, but there's slightly different alterations and looks. And so the idea is that, I mean, these two guys, I mean, not to scale, but would have been 
could have had different, you know, the same species, same, but did slightly different antlers. So this one is really cool. So you can see, first of all, on the on the four uh, the hoof, there's a two hooves right there, and on the back side, you know, two. So there are four. So it's an even number. So it's you know, so if you have two hooves or four, you are a arctiodactyl, which is again deer, uh, deer, sheep, cows, pigs, those guys. Whereas perseodactyls are tapirs, rhinos, and horses. Uh, so anyway, so the idea of looking at this guy, and again, all, I mean, technically all these figures are, would be male because they have large antlers. Um, and again, it, and actually it's really fun, males at a certain time of the year because they have the antlers there. Um, and, and again, they would have shed them and then grew new ones. But this one shows like the big mane. So again, this is looking more like the uh, uh, some modern deer. They're basing that on that we see like modern deer now having those kind of mane structures. Uh, tiny little tail, which is accurate. And yeah, so... And again, it's one of those things where I encourage you, like with, with parental guidance, if you're a minor, to look up like deer <laughs> and look up how their diversity of looks. So it's really kind of a, a task for paleontologists to figure out what these guys look like. And again, it's based on how they look, you know. And I, I mentioned this before my dinosaur, one of my dinosaur videos that many people go, well, these are features we see that are reptilian, and then this dinosaur has feathers, so therefore. What we don't know must be like births today. And again, births today are 60 million years, 65 million years away from dinosaurs or not avian birds. So the idea with this deer, like this guy was around in the early Holocene, our modern time, late Ice Age, Pleistocene, and then early Holocene. So this, we have modern deer to look compared to. That's why it's so great. And this is a very, this is like a perfect model. I like this guy a lot. Now, one thing to point out, if, if you are playing with your uh, Negoceros in the proper way, uh, these are found in the old world. What's the old world? Humans, for human perspective, is a very arrogant view of the world. Uh, you know, we originate in Africa, we migrate out to Asia and Europe. Uh, sorry, yeah. So that's the old world. And then even though there are people who went across the Bering Strait into North America and South America, when Europeans rediscovered or understood those areas, it became the new world, even though it's been the whole time. Um, the idea is that uh, we do not see Megaceros in the new world. So, if you are playing with your Megaceros, you do not put it with a giant ground sloth or a Glyphodont, because these guys live in the Americas only. There are no giant sloths in Asia or Africa. They are only found in the Americas. In fact, South America, until about 2.7 billion year, million years ago, when they migrated north, when Panama formed. We know it's Panama. So what's going on in Asia? So we have one of its relatives that people often underestimate is the woolly rhino, which I got this from Dinosaur Park years ago. So woolly rhino is right there. And yes, there was a woolly rhino. And I guess if there's a woolly rhino, you must find a woolly bam, mammoth. So these guys are all the same time. I also want to point out that we have things in Asia called cave bears. Uh, so these are large bears that live in caves. Wow, paleontology, super obvious. Um, what they don't make toys of them aware of like larger figures is this i'm using this timber wolf to represent dire wolves which would have been found you know they're found in, in the americas but there's a bison here and of course there are modern bison and there were some bison with the long horns or smaller horns but they were like really big by comparison today and bison are really uh, started in asia going to north america we have saber tooth cats and in asia we also sorry in, in europe we have a cave lion now, this is an african lioness but I'm using it for the analogy here to show the environment it's in. Now, there's one species. Now, there's other animals in the environment. I mean, there's one thing about the ice age that people, we tend to look at the megafauna, but they were still like white-tailed deer <laughs> walking around that we have today. Um, but more important than that, I, I remember I went to the Galt site north, north of Austin, and Dr. Warnecke, the director there, was saying how, like, even though people would have hunted these things in, uh, you know, in America, like animals like these, uh, but there were still like a lot of turtles and rabbits that were eating too. So speaking of that, we have people. So here we have, um, again, I did it my first, uh, what was, uh, the humans, uh, primates model one, the Homo sapien here and Homo neanderthalensis. So these guys would have lived and then predators. So I'll just put the prey on one side. Uh, here's all the prey animals. Again, a very uh, early group. <laughs> and then here's our predator group. Uh, so, which brings me to the point of people saying, why did it go extinct? Well, first of all, remember, at the end of the Ice Age, a lot of large animals went extinct. So, it's not like it was just singled out. But what makes Negoceros so special is it lived past most of the major, major die-offs. So, the one thing to point out, too, as far as the environment goes, um, often in case you'll see them in these Ice Age like documentaries, when, and they're running into a forest. Humans are chasing them into a forest, uh, and then the, tr the antlers seek a second in the trees. 
what you're seeing is um, sexual selection. Clearly, the bigger antlers are more attractive. The males with the biggest antlers have more offspring. Therefore, the offspring have bigger antlers over time, right? This is very basic Darwin. Um, they actually live in open plains. All of these guys here, the, 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 the mammoth, the bison, the, the rhino, they would have loved open grass plains. What we're seeing is that during toward the end of the Ice Age, uh, more of you know, we think of Europe, you know, the, uh, the Brothers of Grimm, all of those novels, they're, the, the fairy tales, they're taking place in these forested areas. Yeah, those forests weren't always there in Europe. And as I say, just ending, more forests were f forming. And if you like living in grass areas, eating lots of certain kinds of grass, you tend to not live in that area. So we start seeing them, them uh, go, going extinct in Europe and moving to Russia and Asia. And of course, we know humans would have uh, interacted with them. We see... Um, uh, parts of antlers being used as, as uh, tools, like mating tools. I will point out that many of those cases, the antlers seem to have already been shed. So it doesn't have direct proof that they were killing it for, and having the antlers being used. They may have just shed it, found an antler and reused it. I mean, if I were out and looking for stuff and I found a giant antler, I'd be super excited. So the idea here is that they kind of retreat to Russia. And um, and again, they live, they're one of the animals that live the longest uh, from the Ice Age into the, the modern ho Holocene. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going to point out too. It's going to be really neat. But in general, like I said, um, all the models here are great. I like all of my Megaceros models, but I love this one. This is the this is the new. I'm, I'm I'm going to actually knowing me, I'm going to change my website to put this as a mod example. Because if you were, if I didn't show you or tell you, I have a website where I talk about different prehistoric creature models, and they're all organized by time uh, by uh, when, what their families are. So we have a theropod page and a theropod page. And in our pterodactyl page, I have modern pigs and stuff, and I have these guys and deer and things. So it's all the data points put there to show you how they're connected to each other. So, um, I'm, and I'm gonna pretty, pretty soon, um, after uploading this video, get that as my main primary picture for the group. So that being said, I thank you for tuning in. Um, I, I'll remind you too that I did a one year, um, promise to do a video a week and basically april is the end so what i'm going to do augustinian x then Fosicus. at that point the official stint's over if you have thoughts on that if you want to see more videos or less videos tell me i'm not going to stop making videos it's just that they're not going to always be dinosaur prehistoric models i'm looking at doing some other projects too so tune in for that uh thank you very much and i'll see you next week